Yo, Ski, what's up, everybody, man? Y'all know who I be. It's your man, Pooh. CYGG man I'm back with another video and in this video I'm going to be talking about the top five worst sports commentators now I was thinking about actually putting Jamel Hill on this list and then I thought about it and you know what Jamel Hill is no longer on ESPN and she really would serve no purpose being on this list and then I thought about Jason Whitlock and I mean I mean all right let's be honest like us black people really know the real reason why Jason Whitlock is even a sports commentator. Like, let's be real. And then I thought about the football analyst, Chris Broussard. Not the basketball analyst, Chris Broussard. But anytime Chris Broussard talks about football. Now, when Chris Broussard talks about football, you'll be there just looking at him like, what are you talking about? But with that being said, man, let's jump into this top five list. At number five, we have Michelle Beetle. I mean, come on, y'all, man. To me, I'm going to be honest with you. Michelle Beetle is like the female version of Skip Bayless. Times two, almost. Like, she makes these outlandish predictions. And when, uh, like, when a person does something she don't like, she, like, goes out of her way to just straight demolish the character of that player. Now, if you don't believe me, she made the most horrendous prediction and like the statements she made about Kawhi Leonard were so out of this world it was sad I mean I, I you know what I don't I don't even feel like I even have to describe this I'm gonna let this video play and it's gonna make sense after and every story that's come out in the last several weeks says anything about this dude having any of the qualities that a leader is supposed to have. You don't talk, you don't defend yourself. Now you got stories coming out that you're you're coming off as a an obnoxious diva. So over this dude, the city of San Antonio is over this dude. You can go as soon as they get whatever they want for you. But if you think you're just gonna walk out of there and get your way because someone who has just shown every quality of a spoiled, entitled person, and you don't even have the, the, the strength to speak for your- So right after she said all these things about Kawhi Leonard, the next year, he literally proved himself as a team leader and won the NBA Finals championship. And he also won the finals MVP. <laughs> I mean, like, 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 come on now. So, so, that, so we, we're going to sit right here and pretend like that was, like anything she said was absolutely on point. Number four would actually be Rob Parker. Now, I, I'm going to be honest, man. Yeah. <laughs> Rob Parker, I don't, sometimes I think Rob Parker just says things to hear himself talk. I don't even think he believe anything he even says. He just says the most outlandish things. Like, if you don't believe me, <sighs> I'm about to play you a clip that literally made no damn sense. And you can be ready and you can poo-poo and laugh. I'm not so sure that Anthony Davis is that perfect fit for LeBron James. I understand, but I don't believe that Anthony Davis is really going to be their second option. I Who's believe, going to be the second option? I believe that it's either going to be another player that they get or Kyle Kuzma, who we don't know yet, Skip, hasn't made a big basket yet because he hasn't played in any big games. Now, if all, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Rob Parker is almost like Max Kellerman when it comes to the Brady thing. And on top of that, this man just literally said, Anthony Davis, <laughs> he said Anthony Davis will be the second option <laughs> to Kyle Kuzma. <laughs> like, are you serious? Oh, I, I, you know, I, don't, I have nothing else to say. I have nothing else to say. Number three, number three would actually be Jason McIntyre. Oh my God. When Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp was not on Undisputed, and it was Greg Jennings, and this, I, I almost cussed him out just now. When it was, when it was this dude, I when this dude was left on Undisputed, I literally could not fathom anything he said, cause it sounded like somebody they just picked up off the streets and let them talk about sports. This guy said he believes that wide receivers, even if they perform good, shouldn't get paid because once they get paid, it affects the cap space to build a team. 
Oh my god. You know what? I'm gonna play a clip right here and you guys let me know what you think. Phenomenal player, his teammates love him. They do not need to spend eleven percent of their salary cap on Odell Beckham. It's just not attainable. Saying solely because he makes so much money, that's a different that's a different situation. He's earned that money. So, I mean, and they decided to pay him that. He earns that. That's a possession re- oh, That's basically what you're not saying is, plays, if you're a great player, you just don't take a lot of money. Right. No, I'm not saying no, that. No, so, that, 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 that is. That is. No, what no. if it were... What, well, Eli Amari Cooper, you think about... Honestly, every time I've seen this guy talk about sports, I've never heard him say anything I've agreed with. I've never heard him say anything where I'm like, yo, that, that guy right there, I need to find out who he is. He is smart. He is a piece of dog crap when it comes to sports analysts. I do not like hearing anything he has to say. And honestly, that is me absolutely trying to be nice right now. Like, I'm, I'm actually trying to be nice right now. He is trash. On to the next one. Number two. Number two would be none other than Ryan Hollins. Um, uh, yes, yes, Ryan Hollins is literally at the number two spot. He is a strong front runner for number one. Like, I'm I, I'm not going to lie. When I made this video, it was hard for me to decide who I wanted to put at number one besides the person I have at number one and Ryan Hollins. Like, it was, it was a very strong <laughs> debate. Trust me. Ryan Hollins is literally one of the worst analysts I've ever heard talk. Number one, I never seen him do anything in basketball, honestly. And to hear him talk sports is, I, you know what? All right, let, here's a quick clip. Been incredibly hard on him through the whole season. But unfortunately, no, they got it wrong. He was not the MVP of the NBA. I do not know how it was not James Harden. And when I think about James Harden's season, I think of first. There are a lot of firsts. The guy's numbers rivaled Kareem, Wilt, Michael Jordan. When you think about system, when you think about what he had to do on his own, yes, literally on his own, he had every single teammate darn near miss games. Ryan Hollins is literally saying that the Greek freak had no reason winning the M. The P. I I don't I don't I don't. Uh, he said everybody got it absolutely wrong. James Harden was absolutely number one. Look, you gotta understand the MVP is a regular season award. First off, and number two, his team never lost more than two games in a row in the regular season because of his performance. How in the world is that undeserving of an MVP while also being the leader of the, of the team and averaging a double-double, 27-something points and above 12 rebounds? Like, are you serious, Ryan Hollins? This, this is why I can't listen to him talk. This is why he is at number two and is a strong front runner for number one. And I, I have nothing else to say about Ryan Hollins. That, that, that is just my quick soliloquy on that guy. And last... But definitely, not least, at the number one spot, everyone's favorite person, Molly Querum. I'm going to be honest with you guys, man. Molly Querum, this was not difficult for me at all to put her at number one. Easily, the only person who I know people can't stand more than Ryan Hollins is Molly Querum. And it only amplified after the LeVar Ball situation. Literally, everybody else did not take offense to the LeVar Ball situation except Molly Querum. I mean, let, let's be real. Like, I'm going to play you the clip, and I want you guys to look at LeVar Ball's face after he made the comment back to Molly. Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead LeVar, before I, I get back to him. LeVar, can I switch gears with you? for? Because I have a question you here. You can switch gears with me anytime. <laughs> let's stay oh, focused Lord. here. All right. Uh, <laughs> Like, did y'all literally see his face? Like, like literally, did you guys see his face? He literally had no type of flirtatious look on his face. Like, he was just ready to harp on Molly or whatever. I mean, we all remember on Undisputed when LeVar Ball said the only thing that he's scared of is his wife leaving him. We're talking about a man that openly, you know, talks about his wife, his family. 
And y'all really want me to sit right here and believe he wants Molly. Carol. Now, if you guys have seen my channel, all you got to do is type in why first take fans hate Molly and look at that video. I can sit right here and talk for days, but I literally already have a video based around that subject of Molly Quarum and why people can't stand her. And it's more than just the LaVar Ball situation. It's so many reasons, her countless interruptions and her supposed to be like just being a mediator and instead just interrupting everybody. And I made sure I said mediator this time because last time I said moderator, everybody got on me about that. But let me know who you guys think I should have put in the top five and did I leave anyone out, man? And with that being said, man, it's your man, Pooh, C-Y-G-G, -G, and I'm out. Mm -hmm.